Witness more than two dozen sparkling gems when we view a priceless new collection on display at the Natural History Museum of L.A. County. Then be there when we glimpse the rare and unusual collectibles at the Oddities and Curiosities Expo on this edition of Out and About. They are very valuable gems and minerals. Uh, although the exact value, I don't know. Um, but they're clearly all over 100 carats and, and extremely rare. What is a carat anyway? A carat is a unit of weight measure. And it's not necessarily a physical dimensions of the gem, although that does correlate to its, to its weight. But a carat is um, measured after the carob seed. And all carob seeds have about the same weight. And so in historical times, they were used to measure weights of stones. We'll be seeing some of the world's largest diamonds and gems on this edition of Out and About with Roger Martin. The Natural History Museum of L.A. County proudly unveils a new temporary exhibit encompassing a spectacular display of precious stones representing some of the most valuable gems in the world. Uh, give me an idea, uh, if we were touring through this uh, facility today, what we might be looking at. One of the things that you'll be looking at is one of our keystone pieces, which is a, a very rare diamond. Uh, it was a diamond that's called the Yonker One, and it was found in 1934 by Johannes Yonker, uh, a Dutch uh, diamond miner in South Africa. And it's been through the hands of royalty, and it's been missing for about 40 years, and it just turned up, and we're happy to exhibit it for the first time in over 80 years. The dazzling collection is displayed in a separate room of the museum's regular gem exhibit, limiting the number of guests within the gallery space. Beautifully exhibited in glass, the result is a showcase of brilliant splendor, from the pinpoint lighting to the nameplates, all of which display exotic names which reflect their sparkling color or their place of origin. Everybody has their own favorite when they come into the gem vault. Uh, my favorites tend to be the more colorful stones. So there's a paraiba tourmaline that's got this rare color of like a turquoise color. It's absolutely gorgeous. And having one over 100 carats makes it even that much more rare. There's also a rubellite tourmaline, uh, often, coincidentally, uh, often mistaken for a ruby for the last few hundred years. Uh, it's actually a tourmaline and it's got this very deep red color to it. It's very magnificent. The current display is housed within the Natural History Museum's permanent exhibit of gems and minerals. The Gem and Mineral Hall contains a mother load of precious stones representing gems, minerals, and meteorites from across the globe. Visitors wandering in to see the temporary exhibit of precious stones can enjoy the permanent display as they stroll through the Hall of Gems. The Hall of Gems is right now is broken up into two kind of parts. So where the 100 carats exhibit is, is in the back of the hall. Just outside of the vault, there are smaller gems that you'll see on the inside. And the reason why we did that was because we knew that there would be lines, long lines getting into the vault. We wanted to show people what about what they're going to see. So there's 50 carat gems, 60 carat gems, still quite impressive, but not quite the 100 benchmark that we were going for for inside the vault. Now the rest of the gem and mineral hall is mostly minerals that are dug right out of the ground. Very colorful smithsonites and rhodochrosites, lots of beautiful colored minerals. But all of these specimens are all here for scientific purposes. Each of those specimens that you see in the hall has a unique story to tell about Earth's history. 
and researchers from around the world will come to the museum to study the minerals that we have in our collection. On opening weekend, visitors also experience some informative demonstrations, including the display of authentic stone polishing known as cabbing. Uh, cabbing is the art form of cutting gemstones. So cabochons are usually polished, rounded gemstones that really show off the color, really show off the clarity of the gem, and really anything can be polished into a cabochon. But this process of gem cutting and gem polishing is the same process that a diamond cutter would use to polish a diamond or a ruby or a tourmaline. It's a very similar process of finding the right parts of the stone to really enhance to bring out the color, and then polishing it so that everybody can see it with clarity. The demonstration is courtesy of a veteran mineral collector and lapidary expert who slowly and patiently polishes his stones on a specialized piece of equipment. The machine enables him to grind, trim, and polish to perfection using his skills of patience and precision. Uh, I'm doing a cabbing demonstration and what cabbing is is taking rough uh, minerals or stones and shaping them into polished minerals, uh, as you can see inside the mineral hall, finished product. Uh, what is involved? I see you have a lot of equipment there. Well, this is a cab king, a cabber, um, and what this does is what Mother Nature does to, to polish stones with water. So we take it and we go from different wheel to different wheel, from rough to smooth to rough and then back to smooth again until we get the finish we want. What are those wheels made out of? Uh, they're all diamond wheels here. Okay, and uh, they're actually all diamond, but they're, they're made out of uh, foam. They're foam wheels, so they don't hurt you or anything like that. So, uh, What is the goal here, to make something round, flat, or what? No, it's, it's called a cab. We're doming it. We're, ma we're making it nice and round, and so that way it'll fit into a nice setting. The polished stones that Rudy displays to visitors were made possible by the very same machine on display, the Cab King, which is now about as rare to find as the precious gems that often elude rock hounds. This is called a cabber, okay? Um, I picked this up about uh, 10, 12 years ago. You cannot get them any longer. Uh, it makes it a perfect dome. It makes the perfect cab, and that's what was good about it. Uh, the company's gone. You can find them other places, but in pieces. It makes it a little easier for you, than the, for you other than using your hands, is that right? Uh, yeah, it does. It makes a perfect dome oh. where you don't have to work as hard. So. The finished stones that result from Rudy's skills enable him the chance to speed up the natural stone polishing seen in nature. Colorful hues and natural patterns are enhanced depending on the way the stone is cut and polished. So if I look at this rock, it is not very pleasant to look at on the outside, but once you put it on a saw and cut it, Again, you don't know what you're going to get until you cut it. So when I cut it, this is what I found. It's got nice color, and if I keep cutting, it'll continue all the way through the rock. So well, it'll boil down to being one little item. Exactly. So out of this piece here, I can probably do 10 to 12 pendants oh. pieces, depending on the size. Oh, that many, huh? Yes, yes. Oh. I don't waste a whole bunch, because this piece right here, there's just the face alone. I can get two to three pieces. But what you want is you want to get the best part, the best area of each rock. And again, sometimes you do it, it doesn't work, okay? It's trial and error, and that's what it's all about. But it's fun. Rudy takes advantage of his handiwork by engaging visitors with an even more enticing offer. Using the hundreds of polished stones that he has completed over the weeks, he hosts a free raffle so that visitors can walk away with their own authentic precious stone. Tell us about that raffle. Okay, so what I have is I had um, 
over 400 pieces that I had at home sitting around. I was invited to this museum uh, program and I decided that I would give a lot of stuff away. A lot of people will never ever find stuff that they're getting. They're all natural rock. They're one of a kind rocks. They're shaped one of a kind. I did every single piece myself. So we give tickets out and make people happy for Christmas. That's about it, that's what's going. So I, my goal is to get rid of every piece that I have here today. The demonstration underlines the growing popularity of lapidary groups which delve into the many facets of cutting, polishing, and engraving stones. The groups often participate in field trips to areas which feature prime spots for mineral collecting. And though most of their ventures can yield unspectacular results, some of these determined rock hounds are forever on a quest for that special precious gem that may one day make it into a priceless collection. I do see you have uh, some security guards set up here for some reason. <laughs> yes, this is uh, these gemstones are quite rare and they're quite valuable. So we do have uh, an enhanced level of security presence in the in the vault. So some security guards, also increased security of the cases and you know the standard kind of video surveillance processes as well. Yeah, so it, we, we're watching everything very closely. <laughs> so don't touch that or don't do that, right? That's right. The cases are alarmed. Please don't shake the cases. Um, <laughs> that should go without saying, but uh, little kids sometimes will set off the alarm, um, but that's okay. We can fix that. How long will the exhibit uh, be here, actually? The exhibit will run through April 21st, 2024. So there's plenty of time to come see it um, and look at the magnificent stones that we have on display. When we return, we'll venture deep within the realm of the bazaar as we visit an expo dedicated to oddities and curiosities when Out and About continues.